Where are you coming from? You're coming from the Bible study. Bible study? In this lascivious dress? Lascivious? Auntie, you scared me. This is fashion and everyone looks sexy these days, you know. Sexy? Margaret, where is it in the Bible? Where is the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? I have it, Auntie. How can my own clothes make me to backslide? Things like this don't matter anymore in the church. Even our pastor's wife wears things worse than this to preach. You people are mocking God. We are not mocking God. True worship is in the heart, Auntie, and not the garment. Please. Are you no longer with the Bible church where you converted me? No. I have left the church. Who has done this to you? Oh, the friend who invited you to a program. He only invited me to the program. I am the one who took the decision. You took a decision to drop your conviction? No, auntie. I did not drop my conviction. I only changed the place of worship. You did not drop your conviction. And your wife and daughter are dressing in these sinful attires. Yet you see nothing wrong with that. Okay, before your eyes, your wife casts herself a stumbling to the children of light, and you are not bothered, Frank. Auntie, my wife is not a stumbling for anybody. I allow that dress for me because she keeps me from looking elsewhere. Besides, what you call sensual and immodest is a main fashion that's in vogue. Just as she said, my pastor's wife wears things worse than you're complaining. The Bible says, rent your heart, and not the garment. Things like fashion do not matter anymore. We are in grace. Outward appearance is nothing. Where God is concerned and looks into is the heart with which you follow Jesus Christ. And not the clothes. Let me ask you. If your wife is dressing half naked to keep you from looking at other women, who then is she dressing for when she goes to the market? When she visits or when she travels in the same half nude? Oh, you said that what appearance is nothing. That where God is consigned and looks into is the heart. Won't you win them to the cross? Go and find them. There to bring them. Win the lost at any cost. You should tell your sister to leave this house immediately. Because this house will not contain us. Tell her to leave. Why? What has she done? Are you asking me what she has done? See, this fire she came to ignite in this house. If you will not stop her, be assured to consume the peace in this house. Even the solemn marriage, but be ready. Be ready, Frank, to claim the responsibilities. Excuse me. Glory, why are you crying? Is it because of what she was saying? Come on, cheer up. She was only talking to herself. See, if there's anything wrong in looking sexy, our church wouldn't have approved of it. And even our pastor's wife wouldn't be dressing the way she does. Come on, stand up and stop crying. Auntie, I have some questions I want to ask you. Go on. Ask your questions. If dressing sexual and immodest is a sin, why does the church allow it at the altar of God? Looking at the weddings today in the church, are the brides not sexual and immodest in their wedding garment? Are they not even competing as who wears the sexiest wedding garment? Don't they bear it all and flaunt it before the Holy Spirit in the church of the living God? Are those garments not lascivious as the Lord Jesus mentioned in the scripture? I want to know because I'm confused. In the new church, everyone was allowed to dress as he or she wants. The boys sat down and the girls put on low waist that shows their nude. Even the mothers are brandishing their nakedness too. But what did Jesus say concerning the heart? The Bible says in Mark chapter 7 verse 20, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within out of the heart of a man proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, theft, covetousness, lasciviousness, deceit, an evil eye, blasphemy, wickedness, pride, foolishness. All these evil things proceeds from the heart and that defies the man.
Jesus is saying that what defiles the man is his willingness to listen to wicked inclinations lodged into his heart by the devil, such as enumerated in verse 21, including the thoughts to dress half naked, immodest or sexy as your wife puts it. All this evil defies the man. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, holy and acceptable and perfect will of God. Frank, believers are exalted in the scriptures to resist the temptation to yield or conform with the many worldliness surrounding the church, such as impurity and lust, filthy language, ungodly entertainment, fashionable clothes that are immodest and sexually seductive, immorality in general. Those who teach that believers may live immoral and unrighteous lives without jeopardizing their eternal salvation will themselves be accountable to God for the outcome. A leader's sin is a living sin. Christ knew that such leaders are in the church. In Matthew chapter 18 verses, Jesus emphasized it and warned, Whosoever shall offend one of this little one, who which believeth in me, it were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck, and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. This verse is saying, that whosoever spiritually destroys a child or a childlike believer will incur the greatest wrath of Christ. In verse 7, the Bible says, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must need be that offenses come, but woe unto the man by whom the offense cometh. Jesus is warning that those who are instrumental in placing sinful things before others, especially before children, will receive the ultimate condemnation. False teachings and wicked examples is to join oneself with Satan, who is the great tempter. Margaret, it is the will of God that Christian women dress modestly and discreetly. Modesty involves dressing in such a way as to not attract undue attention to your body or to cross the boundaries of proper reserve. Modesty is the outward manifestation of inward purity. Dressing in such a way as to stimulate impure thoughts or desire in someone else is as wrong as the lust it provokes. No activity or circumstance justifies the wearing of immodest attires that will expose your body in such a way as to stimulate impure thoughts or desires in someone else. Sexy or lascivious wedding garments. It is from sinful emulation, and not all churches allow that. Sinful emulation is one of the strategies the devil is using to defile and corrupt believers today. Secondly, those ministers who came into the fold of Christ through the window have brought so much defilement to the body of Christ. The sensual and lascivious garments celebrated in churches today is copied from those apostate churches in the Western world. The Holy Spirit weeps at every such wedding. It is a sad commentary on the church that in the day of sexual permissiveness, the church, we should act and dress differently from the corrupt society, ignored the biblical standard for mother's dress and embrace the fashion fets of the world, even though they are sensually designed. When you went to the market to buy your clothes, they were displayed on mannequins, the ones that will cover the body, and the ones that will expose sensitive parts of the body. All were perfectly displayed on mannequins. But you made your choice according to your lust. You chose the ones that will expose your nakedness. Today, when you are walking, one hand is behind you, pulling down your skin pit up to cover your nakedness. Why? Because you know you are naked. That is even your condemnation. Glory when you see a doctor. His garment spots him out. When you see a nurse on the street, her garment spots her out. When you see a lawyer or a mechanical engineer, their attires will identify them. What about a whore, a harlot, or a prostitute? 
her attire will identify her. What about the called out people, the believers? Their comments will spot them out as a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. They offer their bodies daily as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. They are few. Jesus said, they are in the world, but not of the world. Thank you, Auntie. The bus stop. Yes. You know, talk about the house. What about the house?